Hey guys, how's it going? I have behind me the skeletal remains of one of my personal vehicles. This is the second vehicle I've actually ever owned in my life. The first being a 64 Impala I drove in high school. And this is an 86 GMC. And as you can see, I've got it all torn apart. Um, I've had it torn apart for quite a few years and I just thought, you know, I need to start making, trying to make some videos anyway, and maybe that would encourage me to keep working on it on a more regular basis. So let's take a look at it, talk about what I'm going to do, what it is, the history of it, and then we'll get to work. So as I said, this is an 86 GMC Sierra Classic. So it got a higher end model pickup for back in the day, but it with very standard equipment, you might say. So it's a regular cab, as you can see, with a bench seat, a long bed, two wheel drive. Yeah, I wish it would have been a short wheel drive or short bed or four wheel drive or both, but I've got what I've got. So we're just gonna work with it. And I've thought about modifying it or putting my bad body on a donor chassis, four-wheel drive chassis. I've thought about all that stuff and and uh, decided against it. And I'll tell you, get into the into why in a moment. But uh, so this had small block Chevy or small block 305, which is a mundane engine at best. And I'll show you pictures of what that looks like right here. So you may be asking, dude, why is your engine green? Well, because I painted it green. So when I was deciding what I wanted to do with my truck engine, I wanted to keep it as simple and low cost as I possibly could, like the rest of the project. And I debated on uh, a contemporary 350, you know, a carbureted 350, first gen small block Chevy. Um, I even even considered a Vortec 350, 5.3 Vortec, but as I thought about it I didn't want to get into a lot of computerized stuff. I wanted to make it simpler and old school versus more technology. Um, so this is the original 305. Now it was mechanically sound, it was running great. Like I said, it's a 305. Um, and I thought, why not use it? So I added, I had an Edelbrock Performer uh, carburetor on it all the years I drove it. And so I got a dual plane manifold, Performer dual plane manifold and camshaft to go along with it Edelbrock camshaft to boost some horsepower there um, then I wanted to go old school on it and I thought you know I'm gonna make the, just for fun make the under the hood look like it could be easily be a pickup from the 60s so I got researching engine colors that GMC used in the past and Alpine Green was one of them. Uh, this is also a Detroit Diesel engine color. You can still find it in engine paint. So that's why, just for fun, instead of the black and instead of Chevy Orange, which is debatable GMC would have used or not anyway. So I painted it green just for fun. Then I got ram horn headers on there. Exhaust manifolds. Uh, I did not upgrade the heads. I hope someday to do that. Uh, I think that's all I really did on this thing so far. I'm going to get rid of the chrome. I'll probably uh, strip that and repaint it. Because I'm not going for a chromed look. I'm going for a factory look. Um, like I said, I've got the carburetor. I'm going to top it with a 60 style um, 
dual snorkel air cleaner. You know, you had the big round canister and you had two snorkels pointed forward. I want to put that on there yet just for fun. And uh, I think that's about it. Another thing I thought about doing was getting a serpentine belt system off a factory, you know, the next generation 350, where all the brackets would bolt right up and it looks more, instead of the crazy pulleys, you know, the billet aluminum, all that stuff, I just don't personally like that look. I like old looking stuff. I thought about that at the moment as you can see I've decided against it um, I never really liked the fact that this thing ran three belts but we'll just make that decision as we go and these are off of a, the heater box from late 40s early 50s pickups I just put those on there just for fun so let's get into my personal history with this pickup in 99 1999 I started going to school in Salina Kansas at Salina Technical Area School for automotive technology that was the first automotive school I went to um, I was driving my 64 Impala that I had used through high school and then I drove that the two years of that tech school and the last nine weeks of that school you could not go to class if you had an automotive related job and so I went to work at Irv Schrader Motors in Hillsboro, Kansas and I worked there for those nine weeks and through the next summer and this pickup was a trade-in that was in 01 so I bought this and parked my Impala and I drove this for the next uh, few years anyway for quite a while um, dated my wife in it um, eventually I went back to school after a year of work at another dealership I went back to McPherson College in McPherson, Kansas for their automotive restoration school. And I drove this and, um, and my Kawasaki Vulcan motorcycle every day to McPherson. And uh, yeah, this truck just worked great. So it started getting rust and I knew something wasn't quite right in the engine and I had to make a decision was I gonna keep this truck get a new truck what was I gonna do my wife did not want me to get rid of this pickup because of of our history with it and so I just decided well I better get to work on it then so what are my plans for it well I have three objectives. Number one was fix the rust. Cab corners, both cab corners were completely shot and the rear fenders on the bed and I will show you the bed in a minute. It's outside at the moment. So fix the rust, do something with the engine, either swap it out, give it more horsepower and fix there was something not quite right in the engine I knew and find that problem and then the third is upholstery uh, the dash mat was all cracked which is usual the headliner I had been driving it the whole time I pulled the headliner out because it was sagging so it just had the metal painted metal roof in there the bench seat was torn on the driver's side so I had one of those saddle blanket seat covers on her the whole time the carpet was faded and the plastic door panels you know how they they all got in the sunshine they got faded on top and uh, I'd repainted them and uh, that looked good for a few years and the pole handles you know were always tearing and 
So pretty much the whole interior needs to be done. That's going to be the biggest money pit there. Otherwise, I'm making sure everything's fine, cleaning the rust, squirting rust oleum on everything as I go. You can see I still got some spots to go. Replaced shocks. Brakes were fine when I parked it anyway. Suspension steering was fine when I parked it. The transmission was fine. I'll just do seals, filter, new oil in the transmission. I thought about putting an overdrive transmission in, but I'm going to be using it less than I was. You know, it's going to be, it's going to go back to being a date pickup or a run to the hardware store pickup or whatever. So overdrive is going to be less important at this point. I've thought about putting in a mini spool or a whole new Positrack rear end in it. I don't know. I'd like to do that. We'll see. Uh, what else? I think that's about it That on the to-do list. I didn't go clear down to the bare frame. I wanted this as... Uh, keep this project as low-key as possible you know only fix what was wrong and get it back on the road so I will keep the rally rims too I always like rally rims new tires of course the dual tanks still worked the selector switch still worked Hopefully it does when I start it again. Well, here's the poor bed outside. As you can see, all new sheet metal over the wheel arches there. Patch that all in, and the inside was all rusted out as well. So I cut this all out, and then I had to cut out the inner panel and weld in new. Patch some trim holes because I probably won't put the stick on trim back on and this was uh, stainless pieces or was it aluminum? I can't remember. Same thing here unfortunately what I had this thing sitting on it slid off in some really strong wind so I'm gonna have to pull all that back out again. Well, that's it. You're up to date. The next thing that I'm doing is uh, I had some hail dents on the roof, and I'm taking care of that next. So why don't we go take a look at that? All right. Welcome aboard. So what I'm doing up here, I was taught not to put body filler over bare metal. And instead of getting the gun dirty to spray a little bit of primer, I just grab a can of Rust-Oleum primer. I clean out my, clean the paint off with a DA sander on the dents. I have one right there yet. I just noticed. And give it a quick spray. Let that dry. Then I go mix some filler and put it on there. Now these these were all hail dense and they were pretty shallow, so I didn't think it was worth uh, getting a stud pull, uh, welding studs on there and trying to pull them out. So I'm just filling them because it'll be very very little filler when I'm done. So next step is to let it cure and then we'll sand it down and see if we need to add a little more. But why don't we prep that one, and could also do this one right there.
get you a little thinner or wax and grease remover or something and wipe that down good. And just a light coat's all you need. Even though it's hard to get a light coat out of spray cans anymore. They all make them so that they just pour it on. Alright, now let's let that cure. Alright, I'm getting ready to mix my body filler. Don't mix your body filler until you are ready to apply it. So I've let that primer cure. It's dry. We can put stuff on top of it. I like using Evercoat brand. This happens to be Evercoat Rage. It's always worked well for me. And I'm just about out. I wanted to get those two dents on top. And if I can run a skim coat over the cab corners where I welded the cab corners on. So I use a, a narrow putty knife and one of these plastic scrapers. And as far as mixing and ratios, I go by color. This one happens to be blue. More than anything, you don't want too little. You want to get it a nice, you don't want it to remain gray. If the hardener is blue, you want it to turn a nice green color. If, you, if what you're using is red hardener, you want it a nice salmon, a nice orangey red color. Had quite a bit of filler here, so I could use a little more hardener by the looks of it. You get a lot of filler. Whoa, just broke the whole thing. The only thing that's going to happen if you use a lot of filler is you're going to cut your cure time down. And I prefer not to lay it on too thick. There's always a chance you'll have to come back, sand it, add a little more, but that's okay. You're going to have to do that anyway, more than likely. Alright, there's that one. making a mess.
can tell it's getting dry on me. It's starting to be kind of like peanut butter. Not so creamy anymore. So I'm going to hurry, run over, do the other side, and that'll be good. Okay, so here's a fun little tip for you. If you have lacquer thinner, put a little of that on a rag and that usually softens this up. Clean that filler off your tools. I've let it sit a while. <laughs> so it's going to be a little stubborn. Might have to soak them a little. But eventually, if you get it right away, that'll clean it right off. So at this point you may be asking yourself, why don't you strip the whole truck, get all the paint off, prime it, put the filler on, and then sand it, keep putting filler on. Well, I do that if I have to. If that's your standard procedure, if that's what you want to do, that is always a great thing to do. Don't get me wrong. But, I judge whether or not I'm going to do that based on the particular project. Now this red and the black primer, that's all original. And it is not um, chipping or cracking, flaking off. You know, if there any of that was going on, if there were multiple layers of paint, if there was bad body work and a lot of Bondo and I needed to do a lot of metal repair, I would do that. Uh, but none of that's going on. So what I'm going to do when I do a project like this, I'm going to use the original primer and paint as my primer, my base coat. The only body work I need to do at this point is filling shallow hail dents. And so that's why the extra primer, you know, I've sanded and I've gotten some bare metal when I've sanded. And so I spread so I put primer on because I don't want the bare metal. I don't want the filler on top of bare metal. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if you think that's crazy, if, if you don't like that idea, then you don't have to do it. But trust me, it works. Then what I'll do after I'm happy with, uh, with the body work, I will make sure everything is scuffed up. Everything will be sanded, whether it's red, black, or bare metal, or the spray paint primer. And then I will go over it with epoxy primer. And epoxy primer you can go over any old paint layers with, and it will seal it under a nice hard shell. It won't bleed through, and it won't come off. So I'll epoxy primer it, and then after that point, if I need to, I'll go back over with more high build primer, do more uh, block sanding and stuff like that to make it a really nice, smooth surface. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm just going to proceed. Okay, so I pretty much have everything sanded from the initial, the first application of body filler. And I'm going to start out by saying, you probably won't be satisfied with the results after just the first application of filler. Here, um, everything that I've done needs more filler 
except maybe this and I'll have to make sure of that um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do in a little bit but I want to show you you know most of these dents started out nickel size quarter size maybe half dollar size and and look at the size of the filler a uh, common tendency is to keep pushing the sander once you you know once it gets to this point your brain tells you well that dent started that big so I've got to make it that I've got to make the filler that size again so you start pushing with the sander and what happens is you're flexing the panel and you'll get it down to that size if you push hard enough but what you can't see what your eyes can't see is that that dent was that small according to your eye but the dent is actually a large funnel shape and so you will have a much larger outline very shallow I mean this is as thin as paint right here you know and sure it'll go down into that size of dent but once that sander stops sanding uh, don't push it now I'm gonna set you up here so let's take a look at what we got all around here I don't know if you can see you see this hard edge here that hard line I can feel that with my finger that needs more right there same thing here it feathered out that primer I sprayed you can see a feathered edge here but then I have hard lines here and here so I'm gonna need more filler right in there to make this even with this now this is all pretty good this is a feathered edge this is a feathered edge the old primers a feathered edge the bare steels a feathered edge that's all one smooth plane one smooth surface and I can feel something there I think maybe that just needs to be sanded more right there that feels like the uh, filler is higher or proud of the bare steel and this is what I do I just use a pencil if I find something that needs to be fixed that one's fine a lot of times when you find when you see little circles of paint that's a dent but I think that got filled in now let me show you a trick I learned from my dad is use an ordinary kitchen paper towel and that amplifies almost what your fingers can feel what your hand can feel so if it feels good under the paper towel it's probably pretty good and that one's feeling pretty good I may need to sand just a little more right in the middle let me feel that again with I found a new dent right there there's a big old hole you can see the overspray from the primer I didn't notice that before right there check that little one that feels good that is almost filled just with paint but it could use a tiny bit now this one this one has a good feathered edge all the way around
but just right where the deepest part of the dent was needs more. You can see that filler didn't even get sanded. That one's full of primer. It just barely, barely feel it. But once you get shiny paint on there, you'd see it if you look close. Now it's above eye level. So, you know, none of this you'll ever see, obviously. But why not do it right? Now that's an obvious hard line. So I know that from here to here needs to be filled create a smooth surface. The rest of that feels pretty good. This all, those three corn edges need more and then obviously that needs it and that needs it. So just take your time, once you get to this point, take your time, circle what needs to be gone back over, pay attention to what the material is telling you, stroke it with a paper towel, get to know it, start to love each other. Okay, so I'm going to apply the next coat and get back to sanding and we'll see you after that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw a second coat in on here. You may notice that this, this round of filler is a different color, it's got the red. And uh, there's another brand I've been wanting to try for quite a while. And I thought I might as well try it. Now that that uh, Evercoat was out, I might as well try it on my own project instead of someone else's car, just in case I don't like it. But I think it'll be just fine. So I went ahead and I cleaned all the dust off. Hope you can hear me over that heater. Sorry about that. Should have waited to start filming. Um, I went ahead and cleaned all the dust off. Wiped it down with a cleaner. Use a wax and grease remover. And then I primed it again. Where, where there was bare metal and I needed to go back over. I mean, I don't remember if something was there or not. There must have been. Well, yeah. run this over it and find out. Looks like I may need to build or mix a little bit more because I know I think I needed to get all the way around this one. I'm about out here. I probably won't show much more of this. Um, you get the idea. You fill. You sand. If it still doesn't still doesn't feel right after that, you fill. You sand. You keep going until you're happy with it. So I will probably wait and show you when I am all done before I prime over and we'll go from there. Okay, I know I told you that was it. I was going to end the video, but there are two more tips I want to share with you and then I'll leave you alone. So, you added your or you put your first layer of filler 
you sanded it down, you saw just a few spots that needed work. So you thought, okay, no big deal, I'd add some more filler. And now it seems like you're chasing your own tail. Um, you're, it's like the dent keeps growing as you add another layer of filler. And you're just not trusting what you're feeling or what you're seeing anymore. So, two tips. Get some flat black spray paint. This is actually gloss. It probably looks glossy because I didn't have any flat. But flat dries so quickly. And uh, just barely, mi barely missed it over your area there. Uh, they, they do make um, guide coat. There we go. Sorry, I couldn't come up with it. They do make actual guide coat powder to put on. But how cheap is a can of spray paint? So do that, and then you can use your sander, or if, if things are fighting me, then I like to turn to my block sander, my long one, and uh, start using that. And that starts showing you pretty quick the true story of what's going on. Now that's still pretty tall there. So it's cleaning off the original. It's cleaning off the original green coat. Pretty good in there. This doesn't look like it's hardly getting sanded at all. That end has. So that means all through in here is still lower. And that I need more right in there. Let's do what I can. Look at this other filler I tried. Isn't that awful? I think I'll be sticking with Evercoat. What do you think? I have a pretty, uh, probably 120 grit on here. So I think I need, that's what I'm feeling in there. If you remember, I thought I felt a little high. It still does right in here, but it's definitely lower in there. Now if you want to move some filler pretty fast. You can put an 80. I think they even make 60 for these boards. Just be warned that that leaves a pretty good scratch in your filler. And so you might have to come back and do another some spot putty or just a very thin skimmed coat and then go back over it with your DA sander again to get those scratches out. Because that will leave scratch is big enough to see in there so